darkness will march over the face of the earth. Well, at least they're self-aware. Rings of Power is back with a new trailer, more articles, and a lot more pictures. And you got exactly what you expected. If you were expecting a train wreck, what we've got ranged from a comedy of errors to a part which really exemplifies and showcases the opinions of the writers themselves and how they just will never be able to handle something like the works of Tolkien. These are people with fundamentally different worldviews that will never be able to coexist. But before we get to the utter destruction of the work, Let's start with something good. You have not seen what I've seen. I have seen my share. I know the ladies' toilets are a bit of a mess, but I don't think we need an entire TV series based around it. No, obviously she's not talking about that. She's talking about Deezer's wonky face. Like, seriously, whoever did her hair, what on earth are you doing? This was pointed out before on earlier material that she's just got a neck problem because her hair's just weighing her down on one side. I don't know why you couldn't have fixed it in post and just mirrored the hair across to the other side, but apparently that's too complicated and expensive for Amazon. So instead, we've ended up with something that I can't un see. A bit like the Hobbit, I mean Harfoot. Seriously, they're waddling along like penguins with their feet at 10 to 2 angles. Someone's walking with their left leg at a 90 degree angle just because their feet are so massive and they don't know how to walk in them. Lenny Henry is the only one who does a half decent job at it, but that's understandable, considering all his life he's had to put up with having an abnormally large foot. Women behind me though can't say the same. They look like scuba divers waddling down the pier about to jump in the water who can't handle their flippers. This trailer is at least honest in several parts, based on the works of Tolkien, not adapted from. Saying your story is based on something is much like saying it's inspired by a true story, when you talk about a ghost coming through your television screen because you've recorded static. Being based on something is basically meaningless, it just means you've taken the name, whereas an adaptation would have to authentically replicate something. Of course, Amazon would have trouble adapting anything considering they don't have the rights they'd need to do it. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. One of life's great mysteries is how did this turn into this and him turn into him? To Amazon, the characters are irrelevant and completely interchangeable and change them, they will, based not on what's best for the content or entertainment value, but only on which identity they want to push to the forefront now. But the best comment about this comes from Nerd Cockies, who said this is the worst case of Cheeto dust fingers she's ever seen. It is over. The enemy is still out there. The question now is where? We live in a time where people are no longer hired based off merit. Their talent or achievements aren't what gets them the job. Instead, they're hired based off physical characteristics and beliefs. This is a system where we must raise people up and agree with the corporate culture. Of course, that culture is people that believe that history is a straight line where we start with bad things and move towards good things. And as long as you're moving forwards, then you're just getting closer to even better things. This leads to them hating their history, their heritage, their nation, and everything that their ancestors have ever done. It leaves them foundering with their foundations destroyed, their history crippled. Is it any wonder that their culture collapses or that they see classical entertainment as innately wrong? Something that must be destroyed, rewritten in their modern image. Not the past time. Kill it if you have to. What's surprising is how proud they are of it, having inherited a world created by the collective and incremental improvement by billions over all the course of history, having been given a series of works that were voluntarily voted for by millions to be the greatest work of fantasy of all time. Now, nah, don't worry about that, mate. That's old. That's antiquated. That's wrong. There's no need to preserve it. There's no duty to pass it down to the next generations. We can kill that. We can destroy that. And I can just do it better anyway on my own. Let the past die. The past is dead. We either move forward or we die with it. And if you think I'm writing too much into that, this is a billion dollar project. Every second of that trailer was deliberately added in. So that phrase, what does that mean? How does that contribute to the series? Does it tell you more about the story, the characters, or make you want to see the show? Or is it more likely to be a message to all the people which uh, weren't fond of the previous trailer? People who are subjected to that amount of criticism, I don't know, they tend to have a way of taking it personally, as if they should respond. This could be the beginning of a new era. The past is dead. We either move forward or we die with it. But the trailer being like this shouldn't be as a surprise. As the One Ring.net did say, I mean, most TV shows don't get great until season three, so we should fully have expected season one and two to be absolutely awful. And they should know. They've seen 20 minutes of footage, but no matter what you like, we've got something for you. Whether that's obvious green screens, 
incomprehensible lines. The past is with us all. You what, mate? It's with us all. Or scenes that look just like they're out of Wheel of Time. And that's not a compliment. No matter what you enjoy, the Rings of Power has a scene for you. I am sorry, but the time has come. My favourite part of that Alf flip is how halfway through he gets a sudden surge of momentum as someone else has pulled on one of the non-existent lines. Elves in Rings of Power are a lot like Genji from Overwatch now. They can just kick off from mid-air for an extra push of force. But the trailer does do a good job of hinting at what the plot could be. You see, you've got brave and stunning Galadriel, who's just being held down by the evil patriarchy of Elrond. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. She's already saved the day once with a body count that would make Paris Hilton blush. But she knows that the darkness isn't defeated. It's lurking around the corner, and Elrond is just too stupid to see it, because after all, he is just a man. The enemy is still out there. The question now is where? It is over. You have not seen what I've seen. I have seen my share. And so because Galadriel is just ever so smart and has seen things that nobody else could possibly imagine, including all of the people that fought along her in those battles, she gathers together a new and totally original fellowship that just coincidentally mirrors the original trilogy. Except now on the casting page, we've changed all of the M's to F. And with hobbits, I mean Harfoots in tow, we go around the earth talking to the dwarves and the elves are all just too stupid to realise the danger until Galadriel comes and convinces them that no, we must stand together or die alone. I am sorry, but the time has come. It will be the end, not just of our people, but all peoples. Because this is the story of Galadriel, the key to everything. Because she's amazing. It is interesting, though, how a lot of the armies have women in the ranks on the cavalry. None of that happened in Lord of the Rings. I don't know, maybe we did just move forwards into a more civilized time where we realized we should probably actually protect the people that give birth to the future of the species, and therefore not send the smaller and weaker people who are inequipped for martial combat into battle like a bunch of uncivilized animals. I mean, let's face it, if you want to talk about being suited for combat, you've got the leader of an army who doesn't even know what helmet to wear. I'm no expert in medieval combat, but even I know that the spikes on that helmet would simply trap any sword that went into them, and that would be horrible because it's on your head. So the sword comes down overhead, gets stuck in the thing, and next thing you're looking at the ground, you might have da severely damaged your neck, and the next thing he's going to do is stab you through the chest. She's meant to be leading the troops and yet would die to the first overhead sword attack, let alone the fact that the ranks behind her are all over the place and these people are supposed to be trained. What on earth is going on? Are you telling me that the terminal list can go and get the special forces to teach them how to do room clearing and make sure everything looks legitimate and you can't even phone up Shad from Night's Watch? to ask him if the weapons and army are using are even vaguely feasible. And do go and sub to Shad and the guys over at Night's Watch. They do great stuff and uh, really helped me out early when I was starting this channel. So go check them out, you won't regret it. But the reason why you can learn so much from the trailer isn't because it's a well-constructed trailer that really draws you into the series, makes you want to go and watch it. It actually shows you very little. It's a few seconds of a clip at a time. There's no real context. All you get is little hints here and there, and you can piece together the most of the story because it's predictable. Because you know who's making the show, you know where they're coming from, and you know the ideas on which it's based. Just by looking at the actors and the characters, you know who's going to be good, who's going to be bad, who's going to be at the forefront, and who's going to be pushed at the back. Who's going to be a bumbling idiot, and who's going to save the world and be absolutely amazing. I, I was watching a stream the other day, and I can't remember who brought it up, it might have been Raging Rhino, who said that the Terminator 2 trailer is entirely different than the trailers we get today. You go and watch the Terminator 2 trailer and it basically shows you the entire movie. <laughs> it tells you the plot. You watch the trailer and then you watch the movie and you know exactly what you're going to get. But it still doesn't distract from the movie because it's a great film. Whereas now, shows like this, they're so scared to show you anything. All of Rings of Power, it's out very soon, and yet what they've shown is extremely little. Everything's a teaser, the odd picture here and there. And even though you can piece together what it is, they're so scared to show you anything. Because if they did, it wouldn't stand up. Because it's one 
dimensional. A trailer like Terminator 2 would be more likely to turn you off the TV series rather than attract you to it, because despite talking a big game, when you base a story off these ideas, you end up with a story that everyone's already heard before. The same thing happened in The Wheel of Time, and this looks just like The Wheel of Time. Sure, you've got a bigger budget, you've got a bigger cast, and yet the costumes and the sets all seem <laughs> rather remarkably similar. Wheel of Time was a TV show where they had the books already written, the script was already in the books. You didn't have to rewrite it at all, you just had to cut it down. And yet they took the books and they threw them out the window and set them ablaze. And yet now we're supposed to believe that the same company is oh so careful with Tolkien's legacy. When it comes to trailers, movies, and TV series, I don't think there's anything wrong with making a trailer which tells you exactly what you're going to get. But I do think there's something wrong when you make a trailer which is almost designed to be coy, to show you very little and yet is so predictable anyway. But those are my thoughts, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below, like the video if you liked the video, subscribe, more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Lots more Rings of Power content coming, but for now, bye bye